So what we learned is, you know, called as gradient descent, and the, here the idea is, does, I mean, doesn't matter where you start from, as long as you are taking a small enough learning rate, you will eventually end up in some place that is lower in lost value than your starting point. But however, as you can see in this figure, that uh, you know, you need not always end up at the same point, right? Because uh, like I said, these are highly non-convex and there is more than one uh, optimal value. And here the optimal value just means, uh, you know, the value is low enough, starting low enough compared to, uh, compared to most of the points in the loss surface. It's not truly a global optima, that's, that is, it is not the best solution. In fact, it will be hard to prove that any of these networks find the best solution or even close to the best solution but it turns out and again this is where theory around deep learning is still mm, uh, being developed but uh, there are a lot of you know good intuitions and a lot of empirical results to show that most of the solutions that gradient descent uh, ends up is good enough that is it is very good and there are plenty of good solutions as you can see in this case there is two but you can imagine this in a very in, in, this is only two different ways but in a very high dimension um, network there could be you know thousands and millions of good enough solution and therefore uh, you don't always have to start from the very perfect learning rate and uh, it also depends on your starting weight right because if you start from here you might end up somewhere else it's possible that if you start from here you might end up here if you start from here you might end up here so your starting point also important and that is why uh, if you want reproducible results you need to uh, have seed at uh, seed values for all your random initializations so that when you run it again you have you know you get to the you get the very same solution otherwise if you start with different random weights all the time you might get different solutions so you know let's look at you know let's look at the idea about gradient descent again right so say you have these are all your inputs and again if you're confused these uh, you know these, these squiggly digits are called as mnist these are like very popular toy data set to play with and this is i think what uh, you know I'll, I'll recommend you to play with it's an easy data set to play with even these are images you can just treat them as um, you know a, a long uh, set of input values like it doesn't have to be 2d you can just flatten this as one long set of values and you can treat this as uh, you know 784 inputs and that's what it, 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 is it a number of pixels and here we'll do the forward uh, propagation or the forward pass we'll compute the cost you do the backward propagation you compute the uh, the gradient mm -hmm. and so now the uh, you know the weights mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the update that is the update of the weight is basically the learning rate um, and then this and some of the gradients uh, now uh, so the thing is you have a lot of different examples right and you want to sum all the error for all the examples and then you want to uh, of course divide by the number of examples and then what we are taking is the average error across all the examples so what this represents is the average this whole thing is the average error for all of your examples and then you just then you update your weights so you need to be able to compute all these errors before you have done the uh, you know before you have uh, before you can update the weights now you know this is fine for small data sets where you can you know really fit all of this in the gpu and you can you know compute them in parallel uh, however uh, you know the data sets start to get very big and it will be impossible to fit all of the input uh, in your gpu or if you you know if you are not able to fit then you'd have to do multiple forward pass save all the intermediate values and then update the weights how you, and this is what is called as gradient descent. That is, you use all your data points uh, uh, before you come before you change the weights. However, in practice, uh, this is both not feasible, and uh, it turns out also not efficient. And therefore, what people often use is called as stochastic gradient descent. That is. You don't use all your data points you only use a set of data points you know it can just be one data point just one example at a time that is you just compute the the gradient of the weights so you just update the weight then go to the second data point or data point but again that is not that efficient because you have to do one at a time and it's too noisy in practice instead of doing you know instead of going from all 
to one there is something in between where we say let's take a set of data points and this set is called as mini batch and therefore you know the most common form of optimization is called as mini batch stochastic gradient descent the reason it's called stochastic is because see here when we compute this uh, average error this is really the true error for the whole data set that is once you update your weight now we know for sure that the loss is going to decrease by just by definition right? because uh, we use the gradient and we have computed for the, all of the data set so the loss is going to come down but if you do if you split your data like this into batches it is possible that the average of error for all these data points is not the true error because when you compute average of all of these values maybe that is different maybe that is positive one whereas average of these three values is like negative 0.5 right it's always possible and therefore it means you are taking the step in the wrong direction it means there is some noise like just because by chance the batch you make might lead to an uh, uh, update that is actually uh, counterintuitively not useful. But in terms of in practice, it doesn't matter because we see different combinations of the data set and we see them many, many times. And overall, it turns out that uh, you know it is in the right direction, even though a single batch may be incorrect when you do uh, when you uh, do many many different batches the expected value of uh, the grain that you update is in the right direction so the if this is your first batch your second batch you update your weights after doing the first batch it updates the weight after doing the second batch then you know your third batch then when you're done with the data come back again but now when you come back you don't use the same set of batch now you uh, shuffle your data so that once in your second so in your second epoch maybe it is three seven and six and then you know, that is your first batch and the second batch is zero uh, you know one and seven and again it's fine to just repeat some of the data points but oftentimes people will just go through all data points once in different order and then shuffle and then go through and uh, go through different set of order again that way you can keep track of how many times you have seen uh, all of your data and this is what uh, is often used and doesn't matter how big the data set is this is how we use it now there is uh, you know the, the problem with this kind of sugar gradient descent is what if you know this batch says you know the, uh, the update is plus one and this batch says update is minus one so now you'll just keep moving between plus one minus one plus one minus one and you'll be stuck between two different points now it's true that you know, so you do have a learning rate but the learning rate is fixed so you know you are just taking the same step and doing you know if learning rate is 0.5 then you are doing plus 0.5 minus 0.5 plus 0.5 minus 0.5 you are stuck between two points so typically what we do is we use this momentum that is over time you want to slow down uh, how much update you do and this link uh, um, yeah, i will show you this is a very useful interactive tool where you can see the impact of uh, momentum on the learning rate right for the, uh, so let's say you, there is no momentum and we start with uh, and let's say the learning rate the alpha here is uh, 0 0.0 now if you start from here you can see depending on where you start the solution uh, is where this line ends and this is the optimal value in the sense this is truly the lowest value but as like i said uh, stochastic gradient descent doesn't guarantee that you'll reach that point and you can see here doesn't uh, you know depending on from where you start now if you start from here you will end up here but you can see sometimes depending on where you start the, the here the, the learning has kind of uh, stopped because it is uh, stuck between some two different points and I will, I'll, I'll encourage you to play with this tool so to get a more intuition uh, with opti with momentum the idea is the update that you do at each step it is it is combination of previous updates you have done and then the new update and so let's try to increase the momentum here and you can see as we increase the momentum to uh, uh, to let's say 0 0.9 and now you can see it you know of course it seems that it's going all over the place but uh, but it also is able to find the optimal point without getting stuck in any of the these values that you would otherwise get stuck and you know this whole blog is very interesting and you know it explains the intuition behind momentum and i encourage you to you know play with this tool and get a good feeling of you know why uh, momentum really helps you not get stuck in one of these bad uh, 
optimize and this will give you a good intuition regarding the optimization process itself so and you know I'll just think of it as like a spring where this optimization uh, this momentum prevents you from overshooting uh, the, the point you have found now as you have seen you know from this lecture and from the previous lecture it turns out there are a lot of these choices that you have to make right I told you all these weights have to be initialized uh, uh, you know to uh, with some random value so whenever you have this random value initialization you know you want to be um, you know you you need some kind of uh, a sampling you need some kind of function you know to sample the random values from you know typically you know people think of uh, uniform distribution that is between two different points uh, all the values in between can uniformly be sampled and there's there's no harm in doing that but you will see that most of the time people initialize the neural networks with uh, from a gaussian distribution that is you want most of the weights closer to zero which would be the mean of the gaussian and then uh, there will be some values that will be really big but less likely to be too big compared to the mean and then uh, typically you will do truncated normal truncated gaussian because you don't want really really big values because that can lead to poor generalization and again there are other things which you know is out of the scope of this lecture but uh, i will encourage you to just google them and you will be able to uh, get intuition behind it there are plenty of blogs that explain these things and you should be able to find plenty of uh, material including our including the textbook that is being referred to in this course now the activation which you know we call, which we still got a little bit of hint in the last lecture and we saw how activation uh, you know is central part of the optimization process as we know and you know this you know, the activation has to be differentiable and we saw last time that uh, the gradient of sigmoid is very convenient right it, if sigmoid is x uh, then gradient is x multiplied 1 minus x and that's why sigmoid used to be used a lot but these days relu is really used because it's basically piecewise linear it's very fast to compute the gradient and seems it seems it is good enough uh, for this purpose and there are other things that are variants of relu and again i will encourage you to google and if you're really interested the most fancy activation function is swiss and the paper is like too dense but if you are really uh, mathematically inclined you could take a look at this but there are some intuitions around why you want to use the input uh, more for the activations and again the cost is the, your uh, loss function and which again has to be different several but it could be one, any of this function and again we'll look into some of these other divergence uh, KL divergence and St. Shannon things uh, towards the end of the course but for now you know I'm, I'm sure you guys are already familiar with these uh, these cost moments now optimizer is is you know we just looked at the SZD with momentum but the, but there are more advanced and complicated optimizers again these are a little bit beyond the scope of this course but again you are happy to come to office hours or just send me an email or a slack message and i'm happy to discuss uh, how these things work but um, in general if you are using it and if you're using keras you can do keras that optimizers and uh, you'll find all these functions play with SZD, play with SZD with momentum but if you're really training a network stick with Adam because Adam automatically uh, adapts the learning rate so you don't even though you, you might you start from a wrong learning rate the network is more forgiving and will still give you decent enough results so these days most of the people most of the techniques most of the um, uh, companies they use Adam and uh, that's a really good starting point because you don't have to worry too much about uh, you know the right values to start with. now you can see you know of all the different things that uh, uh, you know can impact your network of course your initialization and like I said you know, there's some seed value which determines the set of uh, um, uh, set of the random values that you'll get and even seed seems to be very interesting because there's a, there's a few days ago someone uploaded a paper saying that just you know this particular seed value uh, it seems to be really useful uh, but you know this this you know maybe this is like a joke or this is just a uh, interesting uh, insight or just to give an idea that how sensitive these networks could be but you know, don't read too much into it because it doesn't matter what seed you start from for uh, small size uh, networks uh, probably you'll be able to get decent results regardless of what seed you use but if you definitely get a terrible uh, result and you have checked everything just try to play with different seeds to see if your errors are the uh, same or you know, it's just that you got a bad or uh, unlucky seed. Uh, 